Hello again, everybody. This is Dan Clouser, and welcome back to the Journey of My Mother's Son podcast. This is the 101st episode of the podcast, and I wanted to do something a little bit different here. Uh, as everyone knows, I ask all of my guests the same final question. And uh, the subtitle of the podcast, as you all know, is Many Little People, Many Little Places, which comes from the opening lyrics of the song Gloria by Michael Fronte, which go when many little people in many little places do many little things and the whole world changes. So I just wanted to put together a little compilation of some of the answers that I've gotten over the first 100 episodes of the show. Um, they're not in any particular order. Um, there has never been a bad answer to that. Um, so, you know, when I asked the people the question, you know, what are one of the many little things that you do on a daily basis to make the world a little bit better place? Um, every answer that I've been given has been absolutely awesome. Um, and I just wanted to put some together here um, for a podcast just to uh, let my listeners know that there's a lot of little things that we can all do in the world to make it a little bit better place. And again, these are just some of the answers I've gotten in the first 100 episodes. And uh, I hope you enjoy them and I hope they inspire you. I, I don't know. My whole life is surrounding that. You know, it's like I, I think about it every day. So for me right now, and that means something different at every time in our lives, it means something different. Like I'm donating $5 a day of my own money. I don't expect everyone to do that. You know, there's a, definitely a time not too long ago when I was in grad school that I couldn't have done that or I couldn't eat, you know. I think we all can do something. And so for me right now, it's, I started this GoFundMe. I'm doing as many, I think I've probably done a hundred podcasts or interviews or, you know, whatever in the past three months here so that I can continue to feed that GoFundMe and trying to donate. And, and also just like being available for the 15 year old that wants to talk to me just to talk, you know, just like, that's what I can do. That's my superpower right now, because I know that that's, I just hope that someday that 15 year old that had that conversation with me is going to remember that I was there and she's going to remember something I said, and it's going to spark an idea in her head. It's going to give her confidence. And just that's what I right now, that's what I want to do. I have grander ideas that I'd like to accomplish in the future and, and getting more women involved in sport and starting schools in the Dominican Republic for women surrounding sports so that we can move that country along. Cause that's a country I spent a lot of time in and baseball's, deeply intertwined there. So, I mean, there's plenty of things that I want to do on a grander scale, but I think that I love this. I love the many little people, many little play. I, I love that. Cause it's like people think, I think a lot of times they think the problem is so big, they can't do anything, but it's like, just do a little thing, you know, realistically the GoFundMe that I started has $6,000. That's not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, but it's more than zero. And it's more than I would be able to give myself. So that's it. That's all. That's what, that's what I can do, you know, and I could be doing more, I guess, but it's like, that's, that's what I can do with the time and the resources that I have right now. And I'd like to do more in the future. And it's just, everybody's duty is just to do what you can with what you have. And don't let the problem be so big that you do nothing. Just do something, you know, one hour a month of, of volunteering or $10 to a GoFundMe. People think, Oh, I can only give $5. That's $5. And if everyone gave $5, it'd be a lot of money. So I think just, I love that. I love the subtitle of your podcast because it says it so perfectly is that everyone has a special gift to give. I believe everyone has a calling that most people either don't acknowledge that they have a calling or they acknowledge it and they don't act on it. So I just try to do every day. I try to empower people. I try to be available for people that want to talk to me. Um, make the extra time even when I don't want to do it. And hopefully there's some good coming out of that. And so I think it's, it's really truly in the forefront of my mind every single day. That's actually easy being a, a school counselor and a coach. Um, I have been given the opportunity to be put in a place where I can influence baseball players and non-baseball players, students. I have the opportunity to be dropped off here every single day in a very, very small setting. Um, we only have about 300 kids at the school and, and I am put here and I can work with kids, help them plan their future, help them become better individuals and be here for support uh, of our students. And to me, I cannot think of a, a better thing that I'd rather be doing. Well, I think 
think that it, it's hard to isolate it to a moment, you know, to an action or a moment, because my life has been so confluent. But um, I would think just my um, staying in touch with my heart and um, being available, you know, rather than a moment, more like an attitude and a commitment. I think that says it better about me. I mean, yeah, every stop at a, at a truck stop or a, or a rest area, I've got my trash bag handy and I'm picking stuff up along the way. Um, I have a daily mission to make at least one person smile. And I just think that that kind of, you know, that if everyone did that, it would be a beautiful world. And uh, we spent the last 19 days getting here between projects, the longest span we really had for quite a while. And uh, at least one time during the day, if we're not doing what Char just said, trying to make an impact, we're calling we're networking, we're trying to coordinate our next project, and we're, we're very communicative with the people who are interested in joining us because, um, because there are a ton of folks that would like to do their part and would like a little pointer. So we give pointers to people on what they can do. Like we just mentioned, if you can't work with us, if you can't join us, then you can at least find other opportunities. Two things that, that kind of, what I mentioned yesterday while we were walking around this ghost town was that um, the first the first step in actually doing your part is to make that trash that you have go into a proper trash receptacle so that volunteers don't need to pick trash on the side of the highway. Um, we saw an old jail cell here in this town where um, where a lot of people had etched their names. We saw the bridges of Madison County, mm -hmm. people are writing, they're etching, you know, Jimmy loves professing Tommy. love, right? <laughs> All over this thing. And the next step is not doing that. Just don't do that. You can, by being good stewards of our environment and our community, um, that's, a, that's a little step that you can take naturally and effortlessly mm -hmm to making the world a better place. And if we all did that, if we all did, so so someone else doesn't need to clean up after you or mm -hmm. fix something that you did. Don't do something that other people have to clean up. <laughs> right, so I, I think I answered that question mm -hmm. by saying, if we all did this, let's do that. We do that every day of our life. And if we're not picking up trash on the side of the road at a rest stop or something like that, um, we're, we're building that next project. Well, what I do is I continue to let the light of God shine in me and through me. And I do that in several ways. I do it on my social media platforms through daily posts. And I try to keep them as positive, as, as inspiring, as motivational as I can. But I also keep it real because life is not always unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> so I try to keep it real, but I also try to maintain a balance. And, you know, just help people be the absolute best version of themselves because we're all stars and we've been created. That's, that's awesome. You, you cut out a little bit there at the end, so I'll repeat it. Anthony said, we're all stars and we were created to shine. Um, that's a really good question. <laughs> uh, I think just smiling, having a smile on my face every day. I mean, there's going to be bad days where you it's hard, but I think having a positive energy is contagious yeah. to those around you and it spreads. So it if you're, if you're happy, that next person next to you is going to be happy and you, you could bond over that. So I think it's really important to just have a smile. Keep a smile and positive attitude. Um, like seriously, a positive attitude, attitude could change someone's day. Yeah. Um, if you are, say hello to them, then they're going to be like, oh, you actually like care, like stuff like that. Um, I'm student teaching right now, and I see third graders and being just positive and happy around them can change their day, and it inspires me and makes the little things great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I asked my my assistant this question and she had such a great response i wish i could have recorded her and, and then just like played it right now because she was literally like are you kidding me because there's this guy in new york right and he has this um 
barber shop or a hairdresser, a hair studio. And every Saturday, he's super successful. Every Saturday in Manhattan, he cuts hair on, on for the homeless people. And I'm like, oh my God, that's something little that someone does every week or, you know, every day they, they, their day off, they take that day. And I'm like, that's something little that somebody does. And I'm, I'm like, well, I don't like go and, you know, give out food every day. I don't have something specific that I do. I kind of made it clear that in my girlfriend as well. Um, you know, we are super firm on creating a sense of community every single day in any fashion that we can. So um, for me, like I put together dog drives for people, even if it's just saying, hey, have you heard of this place? Like you, sh- you should get in touch with them. Um, it's, a, it's a really good charitable organization. Uh, you know, my, my parents are also very involved with uh, a bunch of different charitable communities. So little things that I do every day, um, see the degrees of the actions that you make. You know, we just took in a couple cats and, and are getting them neutered. And that might seem like a little thing, but that's going to produce less stray cats in the neighborhood. Um, you know, you can do something small for someone that you may think is just a small thing for you, but in the long run, it ends up making somebody's day. Um, so just do the little things, see that the small things actually create a bigger sense of community and just putting out those general, you know, good energy and good vibes. It, it brings greatness to the world and it, it brings happiness and community and everyone feels stronger and supported in the end. Yeah. So I, I'm really super passionate about just getting people to a better place in their life, like showing them how to manage their money and grow wealth so that they can, lots of people have kind of reached their hand down and helped to educate me and bring me up to a point where I'm able to help other people. So in every little thing that I do, I try to tie it into helping other people. So like I created a real estate investment group in Berks County. And when we, pre-COVID, we're having in-person meetings. You can easily charge people $10 to attend the meeting. And to me, I was like, why would I do that? Like, God's given me this gift to be able to educate other people. So I'm going to use that to help these people give back to other people. So the cost of admission was to bring one non-perishable food item that we donate to the Greater Berks Food Bank. And then when I do speaking engagements, um, I will the group of guys that I've been speaking with lately are super passionate about like building orphanages in India. I'm doing a speaking engagement at the end of May. And what we do is we auction off like consultations. So someone they'll auction off like a free hour consultation with me about growing wealth and people will bid on it. And that money gets donated. The one at the end of May is to, um, is going to a, um, a human sex trafficking organization that helps to battle that. The one last year we raised enough money to build two orphanages in India, which was super awesome. Um, So we just try to really educate people about how to grow well so they're able to give back. And while we're doing that, we're trying to bring people in and find a way to give back during that process to raise money for something. It's all about changing people's lives and just bringing them to a more positive place, even if it's not about money, just a more positive place so that they can have a positive impact on somebody else and lift that person up. Because it's just like you said, like when you're in that place and you feel fulfilled and centered, you're able to help other people who help other people and the world just changes just by being kind and wanting to help other people. Yep, absolutely. It's that yeah. ripple effect. You know, it's that ripple yes. effect. You throw that, you throw that stone into the pond and it just goes, you know, on forever. So that is so awesome. So I call it a smile and a wave. It's very little. It's very simple. Anybody, that. anybody that I see, I don't care who they are, as long as they're not from America's Most Wanted, just smile and wave. Yeah. I don't care. That's cool. And it's amazing what these two little things can do. It can make a whole... Day. I'm not trying to sound like big headed or anything, <laughs> but it can make a whole person's day brighter it's just okay. by smiling away. I love that. I love that. Well, besides doing the dishes, um, <laughs> which makes only my little world a little bit better every day, uh, I, I would say it's storytelling. Um, I draw. Yeah. I try to draw every day um, and write if I can. But there are just so many amazing stories out there that deserve to be told, and I think 
Instagram is a great venue for that, and it's good that there's a character limit because <laughs> it keeps me in check. But um, you know, I think there's so many wonderful stories, particularly women's stories, that um, deserve to be told and need to be told because they offer something to other girls and women. And um, I have, if I have the capability of doing that and the skills of doing that, either through my art or through writing, um, then that's it's a pleasure for me to do. But I think that's probably the way we perpetuate you know, possibility. I'm gonna keep it simple. Uh, be kind. Uh, uh, it's something that I learned at a very young age and at some points in my life I thought it was a weakness. But really I just think that it, it's one of the most helpful things we can do and I think I'm pretty good at it. And I'm not afraid to compliment myself on that. So uh, kindness goes a long way. I just try to leave everything better than I found it. Um, I know that's kind of cliche but just like women's baseball I found it 15 years ago and I hope that I can leave it better than what I found it. Um, you know, we, as a national team, we didn't get a whole lot of great gear whenever I first started, and now, now we're getting really, really great stuff. And uh, same with these kids. Like when I, when I was that age, there was hardly any kids, and now there we've got a big crowd. And and I just hope that I can pass along, like I've said, all of my experiences and and the things that I've been through and um, just help them be better. And, you know, maybe eventually Colby or Meredith or some of the kids that were here will, will become coaches as well and they can pass along some of my knowledge or, you know, maybe they listen to my knowledge. Um, I'm sure they do. But may, I, I just hope that, that they can pass that along and, and help other future players become better because of it. Yep. So just. I guess just making everything, making everything better than what I found it, I guess, is kind of a way I live my life. Um, I believe when preparation meets opportunity, when you overly prepare, when it meets opportunity, then, then you might have a shot at success. And my, my thing that I connect with the most with this question is... There is a woman named Linny, L-I-N-N-Y, Fowler, F-O-W-L-E-R. You can Google her. Um, she was the daughter of the man who, who started UPS. She has passed away. But she was curious about what I was doing before there was a charity. So one person believed in me before I raised a dollar ever in my life or believed in myself. And she summoned for me to come to her house. I had no clue why. And she wanted to have a chat with me just like you and I are. And when preparation in life, I didn't even know opportunity was in front of me. So Lenny has passed away. But really, who are you interviewing right now? Lenny. You're interviewing Lenny. And that's the concept of best, even when I pass on. So there is no other answer except... Lenny was that dynamic. She was that inspirational. Forget about me. Two hundreds in the area. And, and that's, that's the answer to the last question. And it can't be anything else. Yeah, that's awesome. It's legacy. You got it's it. Legacy. I'd say there's a couple different things that I would say for this. So I'll try to, I'll try to come to one uh, answer. But I'd say I think the biggest thing that I'm doing currently on a day-to-day -day basis is just being in college and being a kid and continuing to play baseball because I do spend a lot of time here volunteering and I do help with some of the leadership programs that we have through Baseball for All, with our captain's program. But I think being just who I am as a college baseball player has such an impact on all of these kids. And so me just continuing, whether it's me lifting or me getting my reps and getting my swings in, just every single day adding on to that is helping me become a better player, but it's helping me become a better role model to all of these kids. And so I think on a day-to-day -day basis, just showing these kids that if you're, I'm not saying if you don't do the work, you're not gonna, like you have to be willing to put in that time and put in that work. And so I'd say that's what's most important. And so I think that's kind of a little thing that I'm doing every day is just continuing to chip away and show that hard work is gonna pay off to these kids. I, I thought about that today and 
even though it's nothing spectacular. My, my mom's always said that I'm a glue person in that like whenever people and events come together that, uh, I, that I have a, this attraction clause that, that brings, you know, that gets people interacting with each other. And one of the things she loves is because it's not, I'm not the center of that attention. You know, I'm trying to just get everybody interacting with each other, not, you know, looking at me or interacting with me. And looking at that, any situation that I've been in in my life, I've recognized that, that I, I, even whether it was positive or it was negative, I've, uh, I want everybody to, to, to be, you know, to be like, to know that, you know, we, we can do this together. You know, like I was, I did a stint in the Marines, which is a story for another time, but like knowing that the guy to my left and the guy to my right are going through exactly what I'm going through right now, it made me feel less, you know, like less like significant, you know, and, and more, you know, like more like group minded, you know, yeah. but I'd say it's a, there's a character trait that we have is, uh, is joy. And it's regardless of like, it's a, the ability to lift the spirits of others, regardless of outside circumstances. So regardless of what your externals look like, being able to, to keep everybody, you know, kind of just happy, you know, that's what I like, like little acts of, or random, you know, acts of encouragement words of encouragement i know one of my big jobs is to be a mom and to raise kids who do good and are good people and so i guess every day i'm reminding them of the right thing to do and doing things like giving back or opening the door for someone or just little things like that so i can raise good gentlemen southern gentlemen <laughs> cody <laughs> i get out of bed no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, that's, that's a tough question because there's so many little things that can impact, you know, um, and I, I can't really say there's something every single day that I do. But this, is, this is an easy one. Cody would give anything to anybody who needs anything anywhere. Yeah. So this is a really simple answer <laughs> well, for him. He is always there to help literally That anyone. was what I was going to say was I, I literally not only my own projects but anybody that's doing anything if they need help with anything I, he's actively looking for people to help so he has something to do <laughs> yes. like, i actually see that yeah. in you oh, here 100 yes. mm -hmm. oh, yes. yeah yes. it doesn't yeah. matter what it is I, yeah. I, my pet peeve is standing somebody standing there watching somebody else work and mm -hmm. i can't do that that's why i never went to work for the government but you know <laughs> that I, I try to lend a helping hand to anybody that needs it or if they have a project that they're pushing off or whatever hey i got you let's go yeah. you know and i guess I, that would be my my way of trying to make every day better for somebody yeah. um i i guess the one thing that i do every day that i think is really important is i try to live as real as I am and to live an honest life. You won't ever catch me lying. Sometimes that works in my favor, sometimes that works against me um, because it can be brutally honest, but I just feel like people need to live their real authentic life. Speaking life into people, instead of bringing somebody down, try to encourage them, pray over them, um, the little things I probably do is change the world a little bit better. If I see trash, I pick it up. Yeah. Throw it in the trash can. It's just simple things like that. Um, I remember there was a saying, um, there's not a lot of, a lot of people that are kind that be kind. Yeah. You know, to be that person. Right. So, right. If there's not a lot of just bring joy to people, do what I, um, just doing something with a servant heart, you know, just simple things like that, I think, I believe will change the world, you know, where people are off and going right to do something in the left, you know. Yeah, yeah so um, thankfully with my company, I am able to kind of have a give back to all the youth coming up in the sport. You know, there's a lot of kids that, either don't have the money, don't have the guidance, don't have the means to continue playing the sport they love. And my company, we started as a youth camp um, originally. So being able to participate 
with that and we do donations you know we have a give back so if you buy a baseball we give one to a youth organization in need and that's something we do every day you know we pride ourselves on keeping a love of the game and the kids and making sure that they're all taken care of so I get to participate in certain things like that um, and it just it does it makes the world a little bit better keep the kids off the streets um, get them doing something they love and that they're passionate about. So having the opportunity to participate in that is probably one of the things I'm most proud of um, with, with my organization and with myself. So that is one thing I try to do every single day, make sure I'm giving back, making sure I'm participating in those things that, that help them. Well, I try to pick everybody up that I come across, uh, shake hands with people, make them smile, uh, compliment them. Uh, you know, it's, it's, things are so negative sometimes. Mm -hmm. Everybody you come in touch with, you want to pick them up. And if everybody did that, we wouldn't have half the issues that we have. And the other thing is try to t teach the kids to focus on what they like to do and treat everybody like they would wish to be treated. And it, it's sort of like a boomerang. The way you treat people will come back to you. So treat yep. other people the way you want to be treated. You no, know, it's really funny. I, I try to start my morning with a prayer and I, and I start with some gratitude. And it's not necessarily a religious thing as much as it's a spiritual thing. But I ask for the opportunity to leave the world a little better at the end of the day. I have lost some people very close to me, my brother, my best friend and mentor, um, who both passed away very young and, and within the last 10 years. And I learned from them how precious every day is. And I also learned from them how important it is to make the most of each day, to not get caught up in the little things, to recognize the gifts. If I can give some of that perspective to our girls, if I can get them to recognize that you have a choice every day with the attitude that you choose to present, that to me will hopefully carry on and create a better feeling in the world. And we started a um, nonprofit after our teammate, my friend and mentor, passed away. And the motto of that nonprofit was, it's not about how much you have, it's about what you choose to give. And the idea is that we each have that opportunity to make the world a little better. And it can be something as simple as you smile at someone, you greet them, you do something every day to lead the world a little better than you found it. I try to be humble and I try to remember that on days when I'm struggling a little bit, you know, lately, a lot of lack of sleep. Be grateful for the gifts, be grateful for the opportunity to be living on a baseball field and, you know, driving 120 miles back and, you know. I hope that I can pass that on to my girls and so that they will learn that without having to lose people special to them or without having to get to a certain point in their life. That's cool. Sooner they recognize that, hopefully they'll, they'll leave things a little better for the rest of us. And I think for me, um, Obviously, I try and make an impact wherever I possibly can. As a matter of fact, I love the, the saying ROI, return on impact, right? Like, so every single thing I do is driven by the impact I want to make. But I think the most powerful thing that I do to make some change in the world is uh, I end every single conversation with the same question, whether that's somebody I just met for coffee because they bumped into me and said, hey, do you want to get a coffee? Or uh, it's you know, Ed Milet or Burt Kreischer, I end every single conversation with the same question. And that is, you know, if there's anything I can do to support you, let me know. And I say that from a genuine place every single time. Um, and, and, I, and I mean it, like if they, ask, if they reached out and said, hey, help me, uh, I need help with this. Or, hey, do you think you could do this for me? If, as long as I can, and it doesn't damage me in any way, I'll do it. And um, I think that's the simplest thing that anybody can do is to, to finish a conversation or a meeting or a, a whatever with somebody and say, hey, if there's anything I can ever do to help you, uh, let me know. And say it from a genuine place and not expect anything in return. Um, I think the world would be a better place. I mean, exponentially better. Um, and so that would be the thing that I do. And I, I encourage others to do the same. I try to talk to somebody new every day and learn about them something that you know I, so it's not just talk but really engage yeah, yeah yeah like we met some people down in the campground tonight we just start talking to yeah. them she just literally walks into their <laughs> campground and asks what are you cooking tonight 
And, and we got into a big conversation about volunteering and where they've been and where we've been. That's awesome. And it was just, you get to know people. Yeah. And it, it's, it's fun. Yeah. And, and I think if more of us had those conversations, we would really find out that as human beings, we have a lot more in common with each mm -hmm. other than we don't, which is different from what we hear a lot of the times. You know, everybody right. wants to focus on our differences, but I, I think there is a ton that we have in common that we really need to focus on more. So, um, John, and what what's yeah. uh, the one thing that you do to make the world a little well, better? One of the things I've tried to do for a, a, a little while now, and I'm not always successful, but I, I, I literally pray every morning for an opportunity to make a connection with someone. That's it awesome. might be helping them, it might be uplifting them, uh, strengthening them some way, and then try to watch for those opportunities, what, whatever they might be. And sometimes I don't, I don't, I'm not as successful as I want to be, but other times you see, oh, well, maybe I can just, kind of like Karen does, she does it way better than I do. I'll, I should go talk to them and maybe, you know, I, there's some way that I can brighten their day just yeah. a little bit. So that that's one of the things I do is I seek for opportunities to just be, whether it's just a light or a smile or a greeting or maybe helping them in whatever they're struggling with. Yeah. One of the things right now is I post a gratitude post on my social media daily. But even beyond that, I think it's just smile. Smile at people, say hello. I think if we could get to the point where we actually even went past hello and spoke to people on our paths, we don't know the difference that we make. But even sometimes a smile can really make a huge difference for somebody's day yeah. or life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you just said, you know, um, like, you know, just reach out to people, you know, when someone is down, question it. It's okay to like, you know, you see someone on the street is, is looking distressed or something. It's okay to ask a question. Are you okay? Are you all right? They can like, I'm not okay. Or, you know, you know, just little stuff do help, you know, you know, your neighbors, anybody, you can just say, hello, good morning. You know, how is the day going? Or you see somebody's down. Just like I said, you just question it. And you look a little bit sad, you know, are you all right? You know, what's going on? I never used to see you this way before. They might just share it with you. It's anything you can do to help, you know. The, that's what you would do to be able to, like, you know, just like little stuff, do help. Everything has up. <laughs> Very nice. Um, I would say that I, whether I, like, am having a, like, internal, like, Thing or whatever argument or something, I will always end up doing the right thing. Well, if I see somebody that needs help, I will help them. I have uh, the groomer that does Lucy. She's a single mom and has three girls, and she her husband walked out on her, and she uh, was renting, and the landlord decided that he wasn't going to renew the. the I think his daughter was going to move in the house mm. and so she needed a place and so she was able to find a place to move to but she needed to set up a show her a, a salon for dog grooming okay and i spent three weeks there helping her do this yeah. to where she could with no nothing in return except for the friendship yeah and That's i think cool. uh, just doing little things wherever you can see it. Yeah. But, uh, my neighbors, they have, I think they're 32, 35, and they got three kids from 14 to 6. And I've pretty much adopted them, and uh, we go camping together. That's they, in awesome. fact, they bought my travel trailer and truck that I had started out in. That's awesome. And, uh, and I could have sold it for more other places, but I saw this as some place that it would change a family. Yeah. So that's yeah. my, wherever I can help. Yeah. I like being kind to the earth and learning more about nature. Well, every day. So it's hard to say something every day, although my, my life has been 
since I left the, the bigger financial firm uh, 10 years ago and working with Dave, um, you know, our heartbeat is, it's, it's interesting, you know, when I first left and wanted to partner with Dave, I wanted to get his stories out there. I wanted children's books written about his stories, all these things. Uh, but Dave came to me early on and said, Doug, I want to put on sports camps for kids with limitations and disabilities. And I go, okay. And I saw one of these down in Florida that he had been doing with the Minnesota Twins. And I saw the impact that it made on people with limitations and having a, a child, you know, on the other side of this, I'm the father of a child with limitations where he's the son. And I saw the impact. And so literally probably, and Dave will attest every day. And I mean, every day we're either raising money, raising awareness, putting together the events, a meeting with a professional team, speaking, sharing, having art fundraisers, uh, writing children's books, writing books like pulling each other along, getting the word out there. And ultimately, I, I say ultimately, ultimately, we want to do more sports camps. And COVID, of course, hit us pretty hard, but we were still able to do several events a little differently this year. And every day we're trying to, from my perspective, I'm getting the stories of Dave Clark and my other Dave, Dave Stevens, a uh, seven-time Emmy Award winner, born with no legs, who played football, baseball, and wrestled in high school and college. And I'm getting these stories in front of parents like me who are sometimes holding their children back with limitations. And when Dave and Dave come in and they say, you know what, I had limitations, I had to think differently, but just because your child is right now seemingly not going to succeed in life, don't hold them back. And it's one thing for me to say that, but it's my part to get Dave and Dave in front of those people and say that. Yeah. And, uh, and every day we're working on that, uh, that working on that program, Disability Dream and Do. You can go to d3day.com and find out more about that. But um, I see the impact. I hear it. I know it. We don't charge a dime for these camps. Um, and so literally every, when you're so talking about every day, that's my every day. I think caring a great deal about the world around us and recognizing how incredibly special it is and trying to transmit that to, um, to others. Um, there's great joy. Um, our world gives us back so much and um, giving it, you know, taking care of it is so important. And it will also give people great joy then too. So um, it's nice to see that whole circle complete. I think, Dan, that uh, every day I, I, I go, uh, I get up in the morning and uh, uh, no matter what I'm doing, for some, my, my wife says I'm a magnet, <laughs> <laughs> uh, meaning, meaning that I, uh, I have a tendency to have people that have special needs or uh, 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 drawn towards me. Uh, why that is, I don't know, but I also know that every day when I go out, no matter where I go, I am zeroed in. Uh, I have an ability, didn't have much ability any, any other way, but I, I have an ability to uh, spot somebody might need that, uh, that little uplifting comment or, uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, if I can, what I usually tend to do is um, I will find, I will get to know them. I'll say something uh, simple. And then if, 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 uh, if I have the, the privilege of getting to know them better instead of just in passing, uh, I will find something that they can do that fits into what we're doing that makes them feel important because we all need to feel that we're doing something worthwhile. And uh, so my, my eyes every day, what I do every day, just get up, go out and do whatever I'm doing, whatever I have to do that particular day, but always with, a, always with an outlook of trying to find someone. And Doug doesn't even know this, but I found another Gavin. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I found another Gavin. Another uh, Gavin, another Jason, another... We, uh, we, 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 uh, we'll, we'll find this guy, uh, and, uh, we'll do something positive for him. So every day I'm on a lookout for Doug, Doug Doug's, uh, and, and you know, I'll, I'll help Doug, Doug, Doug does the bulk of the 
fundraising by far. Uh, I'll help them where I can. And I'm a guy that goes out and, and uh, finds these gems, I guess, that that's what you want to call them, and, and does the mining part of it. To inspire. I mean, I always felt that that was my calling and everything that I do is if I can inspire one person and make a difference in, in the lives of one person, then I'm, I'm honoring my calling. So that's, that's how I can, you know, make a difference. That is a, that's a hefty one. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, if I can just use my Women in Baseball Week answer again. I, that lasts for one week. It's the last full week in July, but I work on it weekly throughout the year. Yeah. Um, just making those connections with people. I, I want everybody to check out what's going on in the United Kingdom right now. Women's Baseball UK, if you're familiar with that. If you're not familiar with it, check it out. They were a huge supporter of Women in Baseball Week since the very first year. They have a league now with, um, I don't know, it's like eight teams across Great Britain. It's phenomenal. It's not been without its own hard work and frustration. But um, if I helped, I'm not saying I started it, but if I helped... <laughs> just inspire people to know again they're not alone yeah. out there and they've created what they have there's a national team there now that's pretty awesome and um, it's just been it's been my thrill to be a part of all those things um, it's not my job it's not it's not what I do all day and but um, I'm definitely married to it at this yeah. point. well it's a good question I, I I'm I'm myself I'm, I'm unapologetically myself and I do believe that that makes the world a better place because it encourages other people to do this, the very same thing. I think we get caught up in trying to be the version of ourselves that other people want, or we try to be the version of ourselves that we think we need to be instead of just being yourself. And I think the fact that I just walk around and I am me, you know, I, I, I don't try to be anybody other than myself. I think really normalizes things like women working in baseball or being a gay woman in America. I, I think that there's, there's so many things where I just, I, I'm me and you're, what you see is what you get with me. And I wish that uh, I, or I, my, my hope is, I guess that that bleeds off into other people and that encourages them to do the very same thing. Cause you're a lot happier that way when you just live who you are and, and be true to yourself. Well, I'll, for me, I try to live by love your neighbor as yourself because that's, you know, we're told that is, you know, one of the most important commandments in the Bible. And, you know, just to try to do anything to, to help your neighbor have a better life. So, um, you know, I just, I want to have a servant's heart. I pray to have a servant's heart. You know, and, I just, that's, that's what I'm all about. Cool. Yeah, I would just say, um, try to make a positive impact in any way. And that could be um, picking up trash. It could mm -hmm. be if you see somebody that looks like they're troubled, just looking, at them, looking them in the eye and smiling. Mm -hmm. Um somebody's in need of something, I mean, just, you know, doing something that, that, that makes a positive impact on somebody's life, yeah. because I mean, it's, it, it's good for the, the world. It's good for people, but it's also good for you. I yeah. mean, it, 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 it helps your soul. Mm -hmm. It, um, just, um, it's positive all, all the way around. And, and my mom talking about your mom, my mom used to say that all the time because for whatever reason, my face is kind of in a frown all the time. <laughs> <laughs> People would say, are you okay? Are you okay? So uh, she would always say, smile, Jeff. And uh, so I always just think about that and, and do try to smile. And, uh, you know, something as simple as a smile can have a big impact okay. on yeah. somebody that uh, that's not feeling particularly good. So what, knowing our purpose in life, knowing what our gifts are and being able to share that with the world to make the place a better world. 
So that is the long-term big, big message that we're creating in the series. And so um, we're working with the um, idea of goodness for good. So goodness meaning what do we know about ourselves? What, what are our gifts? And we're using that, our goodness for good. What is our purpose? And do, how can we do good in the world? What's our purpose? So that's what I try to think about every day now that I have that actually in words instead of just like in my head. So I'm doing th- that as far as trying to find ways to get that message in, into my therapy sessions, but also just in my interactions with people I come into contact with every day. Just how can I use my gifts to help someone else? Um, and make their life a little easier. That's one of the main things. Someone said one time, like, what could I do to make your life easier? I'm like, oh my gosh, like how much time do you have? (laughs) There's so many things people can do to make my life easier. And I just thought, wow, that's a big reaction on my part to think like, yes, I would love someone to do something to make my life easier. So if I like it that much, then other people must like it that much too. So I try to reach for that every day. Like, how can I make the life of the kids I work with just a little easier for them or the parents or just, you know, anybody that I come into contact with in the day? I love that. And uh, Joe, for you, what's uh, one of the little things you do on a daily basis to make the world a little bit better place? Well, uh, currently, I, um, well, for the last six years, I, I've, uh, I've been a teacher teacher. And so I've taught from preschool all the way up to eighth grade. And so I, I kind of have a built-in fan base there. So that's been kind of cool, but um, you know, I, I think, I, and I think it's something that, that I think you wrote too, is like, as far as um, you know, leaving, leaving a legacy and, you know, with you being a coach, I kind of see that as being kind of, you know, you're influential uh, in terms of, you know, you know, loving on your, you know, you're on these athletes and who you're in contact with and who you're coaching is, I see it the same way. Like with me, you know, I, I have a responsibility to be a good role model to these kids. And, you know, I want to be able to use what, um, you know, what I know and, and share that with these kids. And it's something cool. You you don't, you know, like for these kids, like if I was their age, it's like, you know, it, it would have been so cool to you know, like meet an illustrator or meet an artist. And I never had that opportunity as a kid. So it's like, if I can be that influence to them, it's like, pursue your art, pursue your dreams. It doesn't have to be art, but it can be something. And um, just be a good example, you know, um, and be a good role model, be the best I can be every day. And, um, and, and do it in a way that's like encouraging, inspiring, and really just kind of just loving, you know, it's just be able to just be, be that light in the world. Cause the world is like just so hard, like right now, you know, and with, with everything that's going on, it's, it's nice to meet people that are just positive and um, just overall, just, say, you know, have good goals and good aspirations. And as I, I want to be that for not only for the kids, does anyone know I meet on a daily basis? I just try work-wise, if I'm at work, I just try to help and engage others to be the best version of themselves they can be and know there's people out there listening to them. And personally, for me, um, as long as I can keep living the best life that I can, I can show an example to my sons, be the best partner to my husband, and try to just do right by this world, this crazy, crazy life. So just try to do good and, and stay in integrity, you know, and, and love it. I'm going to keep having conversations with people that don't look like me. Well, first of all, I think kindness, kindness, giving kindness, being kind, um, being in tune with people being in tune with people. Like, you know, when I talk to my students, one of the things that I always work on is like, I want to know how they're doing. Um, The late Ken Revisa, and we don't have time to get into him. But anyway, the one thing that he did for me in college that changed my life was when I'd see him in the halls at Cal State Fullerton, 
he'd say, Missy, how you doing? And I'd say, I'm fine, Ken. No, no, Missy, how are you doing? Because many times when you go to communicate with people, you ask them how they're doing, but we don't listen. And so I think the biggest thing that I can contribute and give to the world we live in is to really listen to people and be open to sharing my stories. Like I don't mind sharing my stories, as you can tell, I can talk and talk and talk and share stories. But through me opening up and telling my story, and hopefully that in tune will make somebody feel comfortable to tell me their story. And I wanna hear what they have to say and I wanna listen. So what I can give back is really, really sharing my stories, but at the same time, looking in the mirror and knowing that it's about listening, compassion, caring, kindness, and listening to their stories and, and really saying, hey, um, I hear there's a lot of emotion in what you're sharing with me. And um, I think we need that right now is that love, compassion, and caringness to really, really, you know, be there for people. So that's just a handful of the answers that I've gotten to my final question over the first 100 episodes of this podcast. Uh, I hope they have inspired you. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more incredible answers of how the many little people and the many little places in this world are doing many little things to make it a better place. So uh, be sure to check out my blogs and other podcasts at danclauser.com and uh, head over to Amazon and pick up one of my books, Beauty of a Diamond from the Eyes of a Coach, or The Journey of My Mother's Son, Volume 1. <laughs>